Yo, what is good, Mets Nation? Welcome back to another Mets Media video. In this episode of Player Profiles, we'll be breaking down Michael Conforto. And we got the one and only Tyler Wardy NYM. What is good, brother? What's up? Happy to be here. Yeah, no, as soon as you told me that you're going to be talking about Conforto, I'm like, all right, we got to do this then. You know very well how I feel about him and everyone else will soon if you guys don't know. But thank you so much for having me. I appreciate it. Yeah, absolutely. You and I both are big Conforto fans, and we're hoping that he will get that contract extension. And uh, I just edited my Jacob DeGrom player profile video, and that's up on YouTube now. And this is the second episode I wanted to upload, and I had to make sure I got you on this edition of player profile. So for those of you guys that are new to the player profile series, basically what we will be doing is going over Michael Conforto as a player, his strengths, his weaknesses. We're going to break down his 2020 stats, and we're going to give you guys our projected 2021 stats. And they're really hard to bring up. Tyler and I literally went into the stats and we're like, all right, what is he going to do? We don't want to be biased by saying he's going to hit 50 home runs and have 350 batting average. So we're trying to be as realistic as possible. And if you guys disagree with our projected stats, that is totally okay. Feel free to comment down below any of your projected stats, any uh, strengths and weaknesses you can come up with in Michael Conforto. This is a very you know fluent video. So you guys are more than welcome to comment your takes on the comic section. If you guys are not subscribed to Tyler, make sure you do so. His channel will be down below in the description, but I'm assuming everybody watching this video is already subscribed to my guy, Tyler. So with that being said, let's jump right in. So let's give our first initial reaction to Michael Conforto as a baseball player before we get into his stats and all that. So what about Conforto do you think is the reason why he should be extended long-term with the Mets? Oh, everything. I mean, since he first burst on the scene in the 2015 with his couple of home runs in the World Series for his first major league at bats, everything has been soaring from there. When you look at what he's done since when he first came in as a rook and was just trying to make himself in the league, a guy that was very much a one-dimensional hitter when it came up against going against lefty hitting, uh, things, uh, lefty pitchers, things have changed drastically. He has gotten better each and every season and when healthy has really shown that he has the potential to be one of the better right fielders in all baseball. And that has been relevant the past couple of years. And I don't think it's stopping anytime soon. When you look at his age, he's only 27. Very similar to the Lindor situation as well. These are guys that aren't just currently in their primes, but they still have the potential to have their best career seasons yet. And Conforto, he's been really adopted a leadership role, maybe a little bit more of a silent leader, but has been through a lot of this core group. And now with all these new faces, I think he's really going to adopt that further going forward. And between him having this strong fielding and his bat just being tremendous, the sweetest swing in baseball, I don't know how you don't even consider the idea of locking him up long term you absolutely need to do it in my mind yeah man we hope that he will be extended before the season starts we saw that Michael Conforto talked to the media and he got asked about it and he said you know what to be honest that's not on my mind I'm focused on this season which he should be he should not be worrying about that stuff let his agent take care of it but let's hope that ramps up because I want Conforto and especially Francisco Lindor locked up long term so my take on Michael Conforto is Right when he got called up as his rookie season, he hit those two home runs in the World Series. I'm like, he's my new favorite player. Michael Conforto, I feel like every single year he got better and better. If you look at his stats, it proves that. And, you know, sometimes Michael Conforto gets rattled. We're going to get deep into his weaknesses and his strengths. But the one thing that's going to make or break his career to become one of the best outfielders in baseball, I think, is going to be his consistency. I feel like that's the one thing that has been holding back Conforto. He gets on a hot streak, you know, 10 games in a row, and he's batting like over 400 in that 10-game span. And then all of a sudden, he gets in a crazy slump. He's striking out. He's not seeing the plate at all. So I think that's what's going to happen with Conforto. He needs to get into a rhythm, and I feel like he has the work ethic to do that. And I like how he's only 27 years old, and I feel like he has potential to be one of the best outfielders in the league. The best? I don't think so. But definitely top five, top 10, and he can solidify himself. And like Tyler said, he has one of the best swings in baseball so with that being said let's get right into his stats so in the year of 2020 we know that it was a shortened season right so we have to take that into consideration um so his 2020 stats look like this he batted 322 from the plate he had 31 rbis nine home runs his obs was 412 his ops was nine uh, 927 and the slugging percentage was 515 so what's your take on his 2020 stats Oh, I thought they were tremendous. You know, talk about a guy taking full advantage of the short season. Conforto, like Dom Smith in a lot of ways, like a lot of the Mets hitters, really did that to a T. Uh, Conforto really 
popped off beyond, I think, what we would expect. A healthy Conforto finally showing out what he can do. It really is upsetting not being able to see him in a full 162 last year, just how dominant he would have been. I think he really would have been up there for possibly at least one or two awards. Uh, definitely um, Silver Slugger among some others. But, you yeah, know, he really showed that he is not just here to stay, but he is one of the best players on this team currently. And he's still only getting started. What he has been doing opposite field and against both righty and lefty pitching respectively has been amazing night to night it looks like this guy you're expecting at least one hit out of him he's getting that consistency the average is going up and it's really exciting to see what he's going to be able to do for the Mets in this upcoming season from what we have seen in the short and span it's very enticing to put it lightly yeah, and as we know, the 2020 season was shortened, but I really think this was a breakout season for Conforto because if you look at these numbers, they're pretty ridiculous. And like you mentioned, I feel like one of his biggest weaknesses when he came into the league is hitting against those lefties. And he saw, he showed in this season that he can do that. And that's going to make or break Conforto as a baseball player as well. Can he hit consistently against the lefties? And I feel like he proved last year to do so. And I wish we got to see a full season of Conforto because if he could, could have kept up this pace and batted over 300, obviously that's a stretch because he only had 202 at bats. But if you look at this small sample size, it gives us a lot of hope for the future. So let's get into our projected 2021 stats. So these are really hard to come up with. And again, if you guys disagree and you guys want to comment down below your projected stats, please feel free to do so. So Tyler and I came up with this right here. He will be batting 283 from the plate, 97 RBIs, 36 home runs with an on-base percentage of 380, OPS of 880, and a slugger percentage of 500. So Tyler, why do you think he could potentially come up with these numbers this season? All right, so there are a couple things that really stand out to me in regards to Conforto as to why I think he's going to really pop off for the upcoming season. But let's start off with the contract extensions because I think those are really important as well. As we know at the time of recording, this Conforto currently does not have an extension in place. And he can take that in a positive or a negative way going into the season should there not be one. I really hope he's extended. He deserves a bag. If he gets it before the season, then great. That gives him incentive in itself to really start to show out knowing that he's going to be with this team long term, presumably. But if it doesn't happen that can also give him further in incentive to make sure that he does pop off and have his best career seasons to date because he will be a ufa at the end of the year so either way i think the extension talks will benefit him one way or another i think he has a good hand on his shoulders i don't really expect him in a situation where he doesn't have it going into the season where it's really going to hurt him mentally because this team is exciting i think he knows that the mets very much want to consider him long term so uh, again that's a to be continued situation by the time some of you guys watch this he very well could have an extension in place for all we know but let's get on to now the lineup as well with all the new acquisitions the Mets have made and with Conforto either going to be in the fourth or the fifth hole possibly you're looking at guys like McNeil, Lindor, um, Nemo, all these different guys are probably going to be ahead of him in the lineup and many times throughout the year and that's going to make him see a lot of better pitches too so let's be real in that aspect too I think that's going to help him tremendously and just looking at what he's done now he's fully healthy he's getting better year by year if 2020 was an indication of anything we should fully expect him to be pushing up upwards of 100 RBIs and upwards of 40 home runs do I think he's going to hit 40 bombs no I think he can get close though and do I think he's going to get upwards of 100 RBIs I do he's going to have more runners in scoring position than he probably ever had in his career with how this lineup shakes up. It's easily the best offensive lineup I've ever seen the Mets do. So I think all those factors go in, but especially with the lineup around him and how good this team is going to be offensively, he's going to see better pitches. He's going to be in better situations, get those guys in through RBIs and everything in between. So uh, those were just a few of the main factors I believe are going to lead to Conforto and having these kind of numbers. And it's even humbling him to an extent because it won't be um, you know, out there to say that he's going to go even far beyond what we have said. But I think we picked some solid numbers to begin with here. Yeah, absolutely, man. I feel like these numbers are realistic. So again, if you guys want to comment your projected stats, please feel free to do so. Now we're going to segue into his strengths and his weaknesses. So these are really fun to come up with. We're going to go one over another. So the first strength I came up with is plate discipline. I feel like this is something that is part of his evolution as a ball player. He definitely did not have the best plate discipline when he first came into the league, but now he has a really good eye at the plate and he gets on base a ton. I mean, if you look at his stats last year, his on base percentage was 412. Yes, I know it was a shortened season, but that is a tremendous number to being on base. And I feel like he does not swing at bad pitches as much as he used to as a rookie and as a young player. So this is definitely a big strength for Michael Conforto and a reason why he is such a good hitter. So if you want to go over the next strength we have, which is his opposite field power. Oh yeah, for his opposite field power, I, that is one of the things I love the most about Conforto, to be quite honest. This is a guy that 
hits doesn't just hit for oppo but hits for power and also hits for consistency when it comes to contact but yeah no that power is great this is a guy that can spread the field as a lefty lefty on lefty can still take them oppo taco like it's nothing and he's been showing that out for the past couple years now i just love the fact this guy sprays the field some of the best i've seen out of all the mets in quite some time and i think as long as he can continue that that's going to lead to his extent he uh he's conforto is not a pole hitter by any stretch of the imagination and i think that is really what's going to help take him over the hump of a lot of other right fielders in the game that people believe are currently higher than conforto it's his opposite field power it's his overall ability to spread the field that's going to continue to lead him to success i love it that's one of my favorite aspects of his game yeah, and another strength I have, which is pretty much the same thing as opposite field power, is the the ability to spray the ball over the field. He's not a pull hitter like Tyler just mentioned. He can have a nice opposite field single down the left field line or even a double. He's just very good at taking what the pitch gives him, and he does not, you know, he's not impatient. He just waits on the, the best pitch possible, and I love that his ability to spray the ball because not every ball player can do that. Keith Hernandez, that's his favorite part about hitters at the plate, the ability to go opposite field. That tells you if they're a good hitter or not. Another good strength I have is his contact hitting. He's not known to be a powerhouse type of hitter, but at the same time, he does hit nukes. I mean, his career high home runs came in 2019, which was 33 home runs. And that's crazy because he's not known to be a power hitter, but he can still hit a lot of home runs. And that's a really good sign. What else do you have to add on Conforto being a contact hitter? Yeah, I think it's tremendous. Yeah, you're right. This is a guy that you don't necessarily expect him to be a huge slugger, if you will, but he just has a perfect balance in my mind. He, in, in a lot of aspects, you can see the Pete Alonzo in him with knowing that he can push upwards of 40 bombs in his career still. You see the Jeff McNeil in him, where what we have seen, at least in the 2020 season, could be telling of him being getting closer and closer to upwards of a 300 average. And he, what he has stayed also this year in spring training leading up the season is that his success has definitely won in hand with not focusing too much on the home run ball and just focusing on making contact and as you alluded to already taking what the pitchers are giving him that has been a huge part to his success i think he's emphasizing that more than ever so it doesn't really matter if he hits a bomb a single a double or even a, K, a triple every once in a while he's going to be consistent getting on base one way or another and i just love everything about him in regards to that aspect with his bat as a whole with making sure that yes he can both hit for power but he can hit for contact any and every day of the week and if 2020 was an indication of anything if he's pushing upwards of 300 in his average then watch out MLB because this guy is going to be dominant absolutely and the last strength that I came up with is he's an average arm so this isn't the best strength that he has but this is something that we definitely want to talk about because he has the ability to throw people out at the plate he has the ability to throw people out at third base if they're trying to extend a hit from first to third but this is not his best strength, right? He's an average guy in right field with an arm. We're going to get into his weaknesses as well with his glove. But what do you think his arm is in right field? Do you think it's something that we should talk about a strength or weakness? I would definitely say it's a strength. From, from everything that I've seen at Conforto, he's never been really too much of a liability with his arm. Um, does he have a cannon like Prime Cespedes? Not necessarily, but this guy still has a great arm as it is. I've, we've seen him drill guys out all the way at third and at the plate at times these past couple years. I think we're going to see more defensive assists from him going forward in this upcoming season and beyond. His arm is really strong. It's perfectly fine for what you're getting with Conforto. I don't think it's a liability, definitely. And the last strength, actually, I forgot about this one, is he has one of the sweetest swings in baseball. So we got to bring that up because it's just a thing of beauty. When you watch Marco Conforto, look at this swing right here. A thing of beauty. So now let's get into his weaknesses, right? So the weaknesses we came up with are consistency. Consistency is something that is going to make or break his career. And I feel like if you guys watch my Jacob deGrom video, this was a big strength of deGrom and why he is so great. I think consistency in no matter what you do in any sport, that's going to determine if you're a great player, if you're an elite player, an okay player, or an average guy. It all determines, are you going to be really good day in and day out? And that is something that Conforto kind of battles with throughout his career. I think he's getting better. I feel like last season we saw a very consistent Michael Conforto in only 54 games, but can he stretch out his consistent play for 162 games? That's something that we need to notice because he definitely has some 10 game stretches where he goes off, and then he just kind of like falls off and goes in a little slump. So another weakness that I want you to talk about is a strikeout slumps. Because sometimes Conforto does get into those where all of a sudden he's getting those 3K games and it's not looking good. So do you want to talk about that? 
Yeah, I, I mean, a lot of factors go into that. It, it can, of course, be how he's feeling physically or mentally. The pitchers he's going up against, you know, if he has a series where he's going up against a lot of dominant guys, say it's like uh, Scherzer, Strasburg, and Corbin, and they're all, like, having a hot week. Yeah, stuff like that is normal, I would say. But uh, the biggest thing for him is just making sure that he's not worried about really hitting for power too much throughout the season. He stayed that plenty, and I think that has definitely been the biggest factor into him having those slumps in regards to his strikeout rate going up. Because, yes, he wants to hit for, for power. He's openly said that he has had the mindset of wanting to be the hero constantly. But at the end of the day, taking what the pitchers give you is crucial, and I expect him to do that plenty more this upcoming season. But to date, up to this point, it has been an ongoing issue with him where he has had those slumps, as you mentioned, where he's just striking out more often than not throughout a certain week where it's just like, what's happening here? And then, unfortunately, it does have a strong effect on the team because Conforto is very valuable here. It's not like, uh, you know, if he slumps that everything's going to be fine. Yes, they have a great lineup in front of him now. But even then, he's still a crucial part to this team. So you have to look at those strikeouts and just hope for his sake that they aren't as relevant in the upcoming season that he just focuses on hitting for contact to an extent a little bit more than maybe the power if he's going to be pulling. Yeah, man. And slumps are part of baseball. Even the best players in the league are going slumps, but it's definitely something that Conforto gets into a little more often than others. So the last weakness that we came up with is his defense, right? So this is not something that we think it's a glaring weakness, something that we don't think he's a liability. We, we glorified his arm, right? But sometimes he doesn't have the speed and sometimes he tries to extend it and doesn't get the ball deep in right field that we wish he could. I don't think this is a big weakness, but it's something that he's not strong in. So we put it on the weakness side. So I don't want you guys to think that we're saying that he's bad in right field whatsoever. It's just something that it's not a strength. So we had to put it into weakness. So what would you say about Michael Goodfordo's defense with his glove in the right field yeah i'd say it's average he's made some really some of them highlight some of them a little bit lucky the past couple of years in regards to catches and right um i remember the one catch yeah that was like a complete snow cone i, I remember it like it was yesterday yeah. um but you yeah, know he's average i would say um at least average he looks above average at times he looks a little below average it, again it's not a huge weakness for his game but you can make that argument that yes he's not a constant gold glove or let alone a platinum glove not uh definitely not for sure which could um, separate him from certain guys that he's trying to become in his career to date. Yeah, so if he does get his defense even better, which I think he will, work on his speed a little bit more, uh, great things are going to happen. But the Mets don't need him to be that constant gold glover in right field. They just need him to be average and just consistent as we've been alluding to with everything more than anything. I think he's going to be fine then. Yeah, so that really does it for our strengths and our weaknesses. So to finish off the video, we're going to give our overall expectations from Michael Conforto in this upcoming season. You guys saw our projected stats, so you kind of saw our projected what we think he's going to do. But to, just to finish it off, what do we expect from Conforto for a full season? Last year, we saw a very small sample size of Mike, and he just absolutely thrived. So what are your expectations from him? Do you think he's going to be consistent throughout the year? And what makes you confident that he is the guy that the, that, that the Mets should uh, extend? I think Conforto is going to have his career season this upcoming year. Uh, I think everything just lines up for him. Extension or, extension or not, this lineup is going to have such a drastic impact on him. And again, the pitches that he's going to be seeing. And I think just how he's going to be utilized. And let's not forget this new regime now, too, and how they're heavily emphasizing, you know, advanced metrics, advanced analytics in certain aspects. You know, it, situational hitting is going to be more relevant with the Mets than ever this upcoming year. And I think that between how they have this new regime and how they have this great analytics group and how Conforto has really ba uh, popped off over the past couple of years, everything is aligned for him to really have a breakout year. And again, I just think the pitches is going to be a huge thing for him. His confidence is at an all-time high. And if he gets a contract, especially before the season, then his confidence is going to be skyrocketed. And if it doesn't, then he's going to have a chip on his shoulder because he's going to be like, I'm a damn good right fielder. I'm one of the best in the game right now. I want to prove it. I want to prove everyone wrong and maybe as to why uh, extension talks didn't start then. But again, that's all time will tell type situations. If he gets it, great. If he doesn't, I don't think there's too much to worry about yet. But yeah, no, Conforto, in my mind, is going to have a career season in more ways than one. Yeah, I agree. I couldn't agree more. I think that the addition of Francisco Lindor is only going to help Conforto in the lineup because if he's batting behind him, woof, the pitches he's going to get are going to be beautiful, especially with Pete Alonso behind Conforto and then Dom Smith. So our offensive line nasty. is nasty. It's deep and it's going to be exciting. So that does it for this player profile of Michael Conforto. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. If you guys stayed until the end of the video, 
comment down below a Statue of Liberty emoji so we know you were here until the end. And if you guys enjoyed, do not forget to hit that thumbs up button. Hit that button, baby. Thank you so much for joining. I really appreciate it. Stay tuned for more player profiles. Also, if you want to comment some players you want to see me break down next, I already did Jacob deGrom and now Michael Goodfordo. I think next up, I'm going to do Francisco Lindor and then go from there. So again, uh, Tyler, thank you so much for joining. Any last things you want to say about your channel? No, just thank you so much. And everyone that doesn't know, we have a weekly segment called New York Mets Talk that we do on both my channel and his respectively. So we bounce back and forth each week to kind of weight things out evenly. So make sure to chime in if you're interested. Make sure not to, to, uh, to subscribe to me. Make sure to sub to him as well. He's doing great content here. I love these player profiles. Mike Conforto is a beauty. I'm really excited for the remainder of the series and what you have next with your Mets channel. Thanks, bro. Appreciate that a ton. Again, thank you guys so much for all the support here on Mets Media and Wardy NYM. We greatly appreciate it. Stay tuned for more Mets Talk episodes weekly. That does it for this episode. Hope you guys are having a fantastic day. Let's go Mets. You gotta believe. Peace you out, guys. Believe.